I think you all know me um, now. My name is Matthew Johnson, if, if uh, we haven't met. And I'm going to run down um, just how my live set is kind of set up, um, kind of with all the routing and, and all the synchronization, um, how the board's leveled, um, how live is set up. And there's more gear um, set up right now um, than in my live set. I mean, it'd be fun if there was this much, but there's not. Um, I guess with the computer, with, with the live set, it's where, it's where I'll kind of start from the beginning. Right now, there's, there's channels on Ableton. And, and basically, it's like I've got two channels for, that are separated that I know are going to be bass lines. And I've got four channels of things that I know are like, kind of like melodies. Um, and then I've got five channels, which are sometimes harmonies, sometimes hand percussion, sometimes break beats. And that, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the section where I have all the parts separated. You know? And these are all just parts from tracks I've written or little jams that I've done. You know, before every show, I usually kind of go in and, and kind of edit, edit some new things, just so it's a little bit different and keeps it exciting for me as well. Um, and then on the last part, um, there's, there's channels which are separated into um, parts, and it's kind of like there's like an ambient channel for ambient sounds, effects. There's a channel for breakbeat tracks, house tracks, te techno tracks, whatever, swing, tracks that have swing on them, tracks that are straight. And basically this, is, this, this section over here is set up a bit differently than, than, the first, than the first section. And the second section is basically a backup section. And it's also a, sh a section for stereo tracks. The reason why there's two separate sections is because in order to um, have the gain structure so that when you play a stereo track, it's as, it's as loud as the, the tracks that are coming off the drum machines and the kick drum and everything like that and mixed all together, it's so that the gain structure is, so if I hit play on a stereo track, I can, I can also mix it and it'll come in exactly the same volume as, as the whole desk of live stuff. So now that I kind of got to that, I'll, I'll kind of go how these are rooted. And this, this, this here is, is my controller for live. Um, and all the top parts are volumes for every track. It's pretty straightforward. They're all just set up so that they all just hit zero. You know, and and all of the clips inside of here, I've sat in my studio with, and so that when everything's at zero, and I play, you know, a scene of a bunch of these things, they're already all leveled in my studio, so that everything is coming in at unity, and so and so that kind of allows me to have a constant volume that I that I know I can play with, and I'll show you on the board in a second here how I've how I've achieved that with the drum machines and everything. Um, these are the volumes. Um, I told you about how there's groups for bass, melodies, and harmonies, and breaks, and all this kind of stuff. Basically what I've got is, is none of these um, channels are being sent to any of the master outs or individual outs of my sound card um, directly. They're all going to sends, like bus sends. And then in these buses, um, you can see that I've got low pass and high pass filters on all of those. And so on the bass channel, I can, I can pull this up and that's a high pass filter, or I can put this down and that's a low pass filter, which allows a lot of control and makes it easy to mix. And so once I've, once I've leveled the desk, and I'm actually, I haven't leveled any of the board on purpose here so that I can do it with you guys here. Obviously the EQs are all just set at zero, and I'm just gonna come in and I just put all the channels on my computer at, at plus six. Now I take this off, and now, when I start my clock up, then I'll start with the drum machines. I've got a, I've got a kit on here that's, that's a drum kit that I've pre-written that I use the same one for every set, and it's also um, leveled in a way so, so that when I'm using it with the separate outputs, it's all constant. And so, and so it allows me to kind of have the freedom to, to have, like, well, it, it kind of gives me a bit of peace of mind, I guess, because I have all these things that are constants and then as I play, I can mess everything up. But also too, it also allows me to kind of take chances and really push the mix all out. And if it, and if it really starts sounding muddy or, or whatever, I can say, okay, well, why don't I just like do a little bit of a breakdown 
And during that, reset all my channels to the way that I had it in Soundcheck. And then when I come back in, it's all golden again. Um, this is also great for improvisation as well because you know if you're playing with other people and stuff, you know it's like sometimes you need to change the the mix quite a bit. One thing I don't do um, in my live set at all is I never touch the trims once I've set them because that allows once these are set and I and they've set at sound check, I level the whole desk so that so that I can sit with the faders at zero dB across the whole desk and that's all home basically. If I need to, if I need to push something up, great. I've got 10 dB, you know, or whatever. I can, I can do all that mix here, but I know that that zero point is gonna, is gonna sound the way I wanted it to in Soundcheck. So, so now I've got my drum machine. All the drum machine um, sounds here are separated into into five um, separate channels. I've got kick, hat, kick, hi hats, claps, mix of like toms and cymbals, and another thing for hi hats. And that's just this drum machine here. And so. Um, I'll just clear a pattern here. And so when I come and I'm doing my sound check, I just, I just put a, a kick drum on and I come and I look. And before I even turn the monitors or anything like that, I'm just looking at this. And I'm doing the same thing I do every time. Okay, it's, uh, I'm gonna put this at, you know, zero dB. I just kind of come along slow, um, write, some, write some parts. Those are hi-hats, these are claps, these are toms, these are more hi-hats. These, these are symbols, you know, um, and so now I've got five channels of, of drum machines written and I know that, okay, kick drums come in at, at zero dB, hi-hats come in at, let's say, whatever, I don't know, minus nine, minus six, claps coming in around minus three or minus six, you know, I'm just doing this rough right now just to kind of get an idea before, um, Toms, you know, they have a little bit of low end, so I'm gonna put those closer to where the kick drum was, maybe hitting minus three, maybe nicking zero. More hi-hats, probably pretty low, like whatever, minus nine, minus 12, who knows, right? And then on this desk, everything, all the channels are assigned to the master outputs. Um, and, uh, and then when I bring these up and, and have them all at zero, you can see how it's kind of mixed in a way that's semi all right, you know? I'm gonna do more in a second, but I know that when I bring these up to zero, it's kind of at a relative level, right? Um, and uh, I test the 101, same thing. Um, the way the 101 is set up is that it, it's just using the um, external um, a trigger in from the machine drum, which is just like a distorted square wave pulse it's audio that audio gets sent into the external clock in and that runs the speed of the sequencer. The sequencer on the 101 is really basic. You just hit load, play some notes, hit play, and it's looping. You have five notes that you've played into the sequencer. It doesn't matter what rhythm you play because the rhythm is dictated by the trigger coming out on the machine drum. And that works with um, 808 triggers or whatever. You know, that's, that's how it's set up in my live set. Now I'm cueing and I'm just, and I'm just setting the level again. And so once that's going, then I know I've got computer, drum machines are going, 101's going. And that's, yeah, that's the gear that I'm using for the, for the live set as far as the instruments go. Um, I'll talk about MIDI then. Um, computer's the master clock. Um, in my live set, it's, the MIDI is coming out of my audio interface, which is the Fireface 400. Um, there's two MIDI outs out of that. I put one MIDI into the out of the, out of this um, the sound card MIDI interface, and that one of them comes into the machine drum, and the other one goes out to the TR8. Um, the obviously I, the I have to check to make sure the receive is is turned on and it's set, set to external clock. That one I think does it automatically. Um, the 101, obviously, it's, it's already syncing audio to the machine drum. Um, sometimes I'll use different gear. If I'm using an 808, for instance, um, the DIN sync on the 808 um, has a bit of latency in it, so you have to have a separate channel for that. You have to go into your Ableton and set up your, your latencies there. Every, every piece of gear reacts a little bit differently. Um, if, you're, if you're playing with people with computers, you know, obviously, they have to set their latencies and everything like that. Um, in the sound check as well. 